Hey students, I recently uploaded a video talking about moving your chords past the first three frets. So in other words, getting you away from all these open chords and using all of this space on your fretboard, which is a lot of real estate. And think about the possibilities. If you can just get away from these three frets, there's so much you can do higher up on the neck. But the way to get there is using movable chords, movable shapes. Bar chords would be an example of that. But the problem is that bar chords are either very difficult for most people or they just don't understand what they are. So I want to help you out with that because I want you to be an awesome player and be able to play the chords that you want to play when you want to play them and not just be stuck and relegated to the first three frets. So the way to do this is to take an E major shape. And if you look at your fingers, you'll notice that you have three fretted notes, but you also have three open strings and that's important here because if I take my E major shape and I start moving it out into my fretboard yes these three fretted notes are moving with me but the three open notes are still down here still trapped down here so if there was a way to move the open notes with my hand well that would be great so a lot of people would reach for their capo and they would clamp their capo on their guitar and that essentially moves all the open notes up and then they can make their E major shape up there and that'd be fine. But the problem with that is once you clamp that capo down and you start playing your song, that capo is pretty much stuck there. So when you move your hand around, that capo is not moving with you and you're not gonna readjust the capo every time you have a chord change. So now what if there was a way that the capo would move with our hand every time we moved our hand up or down the neck. Well, there's a way to do this, and it's using your finger. If we just clamp our finger down, much like a capo would be clamped down, we call that a bar. That's why these are bar chords. And now I can make that E major shape with my third finger, my pinky, and my middle finger. At this point, if I move my hand, everything is gonna move with me, including the bar. So if it works for E major, it should work for E minor. I just take this note and I move it because E minor only has two fingers, right? So I'm gonna use my third finger and my pinky, freeing up my pointer finger for the bar. Now if I take this and I slide it out, now I have my, mar my minor bar chord shape. Now because my middle finger really has nothing to do at this point, I like to lean it up against my pointer finger and it helps me apply a little bit more pressure because you do have to have a lot of pressure on that pointer finger to get this to ring out. If it works for E major and E minor, it should work for A major and A minor. So that's how this works. Here's my A major open chord. I have open notes that I'm gonna use my pointer finger with, so I'm gonna replace those three fretted notes with just a ring finger. Well, this is actually my bar, not my pointer finger, but my ring finger becomes my bar playing those three notes. That's found on uh, strings two, three, and four. My pointer finger is gonna handle the open note. Now, some chord charts will show you to go ahead and strum the first string as well, your smallest string, but I'm gonna tell you not to do that with this particular bar chord. Just avoid that note. It's not really a necessary note, and it just makes it much more difficult to play just by adding that one more note. So just avoid it with your pick and focus on four strings, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth string, just those. Now I can move this out, and now I have a major bar chord. Minor, same thing. I got this A minor shape. I need to free up my pointer finger. So I'll just rearrange my fingers to third finger, pinky, and middle finger. Again, I'm not changing the notes. I'm just changing what finger plays those notes. That frees up my pointer finger. It's going to cover what these open notes would be doing. And at this point, I'm gonna strum five out of the six strings. I'm only gonna avoid the, the big E string, the sixth string, and everything else I can strum. So I'll pull this out. Again, my whole hand is moving with me, right? And 
that is how bar chords are played and how they work. Now, understanding that, reading a chord chart, getting your fingers even in the right spot, that's all well and good, but the reality of it is for a lot of people, when they go to strum it, it's not gonna sound so great. You might get a sound that's a little bit more like this. A lot of muted notes, maybe even buzzing notes. The mechanics of it are challenging, but I have a tip for you. Your thumb plays a big role in this. Do not keep your thumb on the top of your neck. You want to slide it back about halfway. If you look at my guitar, I got this stripe back here. So when I slide it down, it's gonna be approximately halfway down the neck. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me a lot more grip on the neck so I can squeeze really hard. Because remember, it's like taking the place of a capo, which is a clamp. So your hand now is a clamp. So I wanna squeeze really hard and lay this finger flat. However, my other fingers need to be rounded and coming in more at a perpendicular angle. You do not want them 45 degrees because they'll start affecting the strings that are below them. They'll start touching them and they're not gonna be able to uh, ring out. All right, so lay this flat thumb about halfway down the back of the neck, build that, let's say, E major shape. We'll go with that. And then practice strumming through. In the beginning, you're gonna get some bum notes and you can try to correct it. Keep Again, keeping in mind the curvature of your fingers, using your fingertips more at a perpendicular angle, not angled down. It may not be perfect at the beginning, but more you practice, the more you're gonna get it, okay? Now, you also wanna practice moving from one bar chord shape to the next. And moving from this E major shape to this A minor shape, is probably the easiest way to get started because they're not very different from each other. They're just moving one set of strings to the next. So here's my E major shape to that A minor shape. Don't wait for the chords to sound perfect before you start practicing moving from one chord to another. It'll get better with time. You always do your best, but they'll get better with time and you wanna start using these chords sooner than later because if you obsess over the sound of them, you'll probably never get past the, the first few days of practicing because you're gonna be extremely frustrated. Just start playing songs and do your best. Little by little, adjusting your hand here, adjusting a finger there, they're gonna sound better over time and then you're gonna get it. Now, once you get it, once it really starts clicking and you can start moving from one chord into another, then the world of possibilities opens up to you like you wouldn't even believe. Think about it. If you did well with the first three frets, imagine what you would do with 20 some odd frets. There's a lot you can do and a lot of fun you can have. Now, this is the very beginning of the conversation of bar chords. There's more to this, but I just gave you a big bite to start chewing. So, you know, taste that for a while, work on that for a while, and I'll catch up with you.